General Mills Hour. This is Charles Lyon, your host, welcoming you to the General Mills Hour, an hour of good listening. We bring you three outstanding serial dramas, The Guiding Light, Today's Children, and The Woman in White. And over many of these stations, the Betty Crocker program. While all the world is awaiting confirmation of the news from Japan, life still goes on, as it does today for Pete Mano. It doesn't take courage to take the consequences of our wrongdoing when no other course is open to us. But to be in the position of Peter Mano, to have committed a misdeed that no one knows about except his wife and that he can be punished for only if he confesses it himself. To be in that position, and to choose to confess it, to choose to take the consequences, that calls for great integrity. In taking that course, Pete justified the faith that others have in him, justified his faith in himself. That is his guiding light. Guiding Light. Brought to you by Cheerios. Shopping for the family groceries is no fun these hot days, is it? Especially standing in long lines waiting to buy rationed food. So here's a suggestion for something that isn't rationed, and it'll make a third of all the meals you serve this week mighty good. Your breakfast. And this is what I'd suggest you be sure to order. Cheerios. Yes, Cheerios, that delicious ready-to-eat cereal that's made from oats in the form of tiny, golden, little donut-like shapes. Yes, ma'am, it's a fact. Cheerios is made from nourishing whole grain hulled oats. And it's ready to eat, needs no cooking. It's mighty appealing to see and mighty good to taste, too. Cheerios has a really great flavor that folks find worth repeating. So tender and crisp because Cheerios is exploded in a unique type of gun to give it that pleasing, distinctive crispiness. Do try Cheerios. Put it on your shopping list right now. And when you go shopping, look for that yellow package with a blue bowl on it. Ask for Cheerios. Light. Darling, any further news on the radio? No. No, they're still waiting for something official. Well, it can't be long now. Yes, thank God. Angie, you aren't eating much breakfast. Oh, as much as I usually do. It was quite a storm we had last night. Mm-hmm. It seems to have cooled things off a little. Hmm. Well, we haven't too much of this hot weather left. It'll be fall before we know it. He's going through with it. Going to the Bar Association. To Mr. Burroughs and and admit what happened. The mistake he made seven years ago. It took him all night to come to a decision. But his mind's made up now. He hasn't said a word, but he seems so, so relieved. More like himself than he's been in weeks. He's got courage. Taking such a course voluntarily, going ahead with it even though he knows it may mean disbarment. The end of his career, disgrace. Oh, I hope they'll be fair about it. I hope they'll take the circumstances, his record, into consideration. I want him to do the right thing. I pray that that he'd be able to face it. He's got to be true to himself. 
He's got to make peace with himself. And he never could if he fell down on this. But it would break my heart. Just break my heart if they made him stop practicing law. If he had to start all over again in, in something else after... after working so hard to get where he is. Some toast, Angie? What? Oh, no, thanks. Now, look here. Didn't Jonathan tell you you should eat more? Get your weight up? Oh, he wants me to gain a few pounds, but don't worry, I will. Well, a little conscious effort won't hurt any. At least, darling, drink your fruit juice. Yes. Here, let me pour you some more coffee. Uh, just a half a cup. Oh, good. Thanks. Are you tired, baby? Oh, not particularly. Why? Well, you didn't get much rest last night. Staying awake until I came up. And you seem a little preoccupied. I guess I am a little sleepy. You're not worrying about things, are you? Why, no. No, of course not. Well, you mustn't, darling. Uh, what time is it? I forgot to put on my wristwatch. Quarter of ten. Oh, I've got to be getting downtown. And you'd better go back to bed, young lady. Oh, I'll have a good nap this afternoon. Uh, uh, don't get up. I, I'm just going to grab my hat and run. Pete? Yes? You're going to see Mr. Burroughs today, aren't you? Yes. Call me as soon as you've talked with him, will you? Yes, I'll call you right away. Good luck, darling. Thanks, baby. And you remember what I told you. No worry. Everything is going to be all right. today. I had one of the men assigned to my office pick him up. Well, that's the story, Mr. Burroughs. I came to you because you were state's attorney, my superior, when it happened, when Blackie was tried. I see. I, I didn't know what to say, Pete. I remember the whole case, some of the circumstances. 1938, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. There's never been any question in my mind that Hall was guilty. He pulled a number of jobs before the jewel robbery, but he was pretty clever. We never could get much on him. That's why I assigned the case to you. I wanted a conviction. I had no idea, of course, that your brother was involved, or I'd have certainly had one of the other men in the office in every case. Well, I told you how his name came into it. It was a surprise move by the defense. Blackie tried to pin the whole thing on him, and Tony was strictly innocent. A case of a boy falling in with bad company and being made to go. I seem to remember you used to have a theory about giving people a second chance. First offenders, youngsters caught in a jam. Well, I applied the theory to my own brother, but I went after it in the wrong way. Well, how has the theory worked? Has your brother justified your faith in him? Completely, Mr. Burroughs. He's gone straight as an arrow ever since. He lives in Detroit. He, he has a job as an accountant there. Married to a fine girl, two children, a nice little home. I'd hate to see him involved now. Well, I don't see why he should be. Judging from what you've told me, there's no evidence against him. Certainly none that would justify reopening the case after all this time. No, there's not a shred of evidence against Tony. Well, I wouldn't worry about that part of it. If I know the state's attorney, he isn't going to prosecute an innocent man. Particularly not the brother of his special assistant. Scott Matthews is pretty sold on you, Pete. I'm afraid he won't be after I tell him what I've just told you. You know, I don't quite understand why you've come forward with this. Now, that is. After keeping it to yourself for seven years... Paul's dead, and you say he's the only one you had to fear. Mr. Burroughs, maybe it was myself I feared. The effect on me of keeping it secret any longer. Oh. Well, in any event, your action's purely voluntary. Yes. You realize that as president of the Bar Association, I 
have no choice but to refer your story to the grievance committee. I expect you to do that. And uh, you understand what that may mean? Possibility of disbarment? The end of your legal career? Yes, I understand everything. It's a very difficult duty you impose on me. I remember telling you as a youngster, just starting in as an assistant prosecutor, that you'd someday succeed as a state's attorney. I'd hoped that prediction was about to be fulfilled. I... I'm sorry I've let you down. Let me down? I wonder. A man can afford to lose everything but his integrity. If he loses that, he lose, loses all. No matter what kind of office he's gained in the meantime. Somehow I think your integrity is safe. Thank you, Mr. Burroughs. Have you any idea when the grievance committee will act on the matter? I believe it's meeting tomorrow. Uh, you'd like to have it considered as quickly as possible, I suppose. Yes, of course. The sooner the better. Well, I'll see what I can do. Shouldn't take more than a few days. Good. Well, I won't take up any more of your time.